my name is Marcin Kapczyński and I'm from Thomson Reuters, Intellectual Property and Science Division, which is responsible for such a wonderful things like Web of Science, Science Citation Indexes. Everyone heard about the Web of Science before? <laughs> All right, good. And some uh, research uh, evaluation. That's what we do. We uh, we implement some measurements and uh, what I would like to highlight at this very beginning is that we are not publisher. So we provide you the data, uh, we provide the high level, uh, high quality data and we want to do it as broad as possible. So that's why I want to pin to my jacket this uh, open access button here which I received on one conference in London. Just to let you know, I'm with you people. <laughs> Alright, here we go. It. Okay, so um, I get really not much time today, so I will be speeding up. Uh, we all know that the universe, digital universe, is expanding, and universe itself is expanding also. But uh, when we talk about the digital universe, we talk about the uh, zettabytes already, not terabytes, not gigabytes, and this is coming rapidly and you see the factors, so that's a lot of data around and this is what we had um, before as a, named as a big data. And when we talk about the data in this context, we think about the data which is not this traditional, this non-traditional uh, data um, as we can find the scholar output. I think about the data which comes along with the manuscripts and might be published as uh, together with the manuscripts, but very often it's, uh, it goes with a different, in a different format. It's less physical form, it's more electronical, and what it is um, going to is mainly personal, personal resources, uh, personal websites. We did the survey, so we know it, and uh, some of them are landing on this uh, department or institutional repositories and it's growing, it's booming, and my personal opinion is that we will have more percentage of that very soon. So how it has started? I really don't remember, but I think uh, what I found is like 2000, uh, 2003 when this NIH, uh, National Institute of Health, have um, published, uh, have maintained this uh, data sharing policy for the first time. But they did it only for the big application for the fund, funds. Um, then we had like 2010 when the National Science Foundation said that they need to implement this uh, data sharing plan and they will reject all those applications that are not having this data management plan uh, in, plan, in place. And uh, nowadays I think, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that they reject that the, all the projects that uh, don't have that plan of uh, data sharing are uh, just simply rejected and there is no funds, there is no money. Why they do that? Because of the benefits of the data sharing and it was uh, being named uh, already and we talked about it, what kind of benefits we have with data sharing, do you remember? I wonder if we did the, uh, the survey, which one was the best one for you? And I hope you're going to say citations. No? Okay, but uh, I think for the funding agencies that will be... What is it? Pure advancement. Yes, because in some place uh, when you can use the data of someone else, you save the time, energy and the money. So we do not duplicate the research, uh, research where someone did before. And uh, for the perspective, from the perspective of the funding agencies, uh, they know that they do not finance the same research again. So there is also the, someone, something that I like uh, a lot is a verification of the results. And we know, uh, we all know the history of the science, so there was this big mystification. So the, someone placed the research, uh, the article, and uh, they didn't provide, they didn't support with the data, and we, we, we were not able to, to um, check it. So that's what we want to emphasize as the main benefits of sharing, and you probably all know it. Um, there are also some potential issues, and uh, we also know it. So it's going to be the competitive consideration, confidentiality issues, we talked about it. And uh, this, uh, let's say, uh, psychological um, 
attitude of keeping the data that I have produced, it's mine, it's my precious, and I'm not going to share it. Uh, but it's changing, hopefully. And uh, what we found that uh, it was said uh, before in Magda's speech that there are different uh, disciplines uh, and there's the different, um, let's say, approach for the data sharing. And we find out that, that in some disciplines there's bigger um, will for data sharing. And in some, it's less. So we know that it's all developing right now and since the and the National Science Foundation have implemented this uh, mandate, uh, the many researchers, universities uh, produce their own repositories and I know it and you know it and we know it also that there is a many quality repositories around the world and uh, there are many of those that you probably know some of those logos and uh, they are the repositories we talk. We talk we are talking and we are cooperating with, and there's many more. Right, okay, and uh, what we observed as problems is the problem with the access and discovery, because there's no like a one comprehensive place that you can find all the things. You still need to search to find some data, and there's many places to search. And uh, we don't have a citation standards. So we work on that, but we still, I, I believe that the most of the, uh, of the researchers don't know how to cite that kind, that kind of a data. And as you remember from the previous slide, the citation are the main incentive for uh, sharing the data. So we need to work on that. And there is still lack of willingness to deposit and cite and lack of recognition. So the researchers said in the, in the survey that they would uh, share more data if they would get more credit for that. So what we need to do, we need to, uh, we have start and start thinking about it. What we need to do, we need to enable the discovery of the data repositories some way and data studies. We need to help the researchers to find and track this impact of this data and also provide the measurements of the research institutional research output and uh, comprehensive um, bibliometric analysis. And we did it. In, 90, uh, in 2012, Thomson Reuters has launched the Data Citation Index. And we started with um, 80, 80 repositories. I mean, by repositories, I know that's a different understanding of this word in Poland, but in the other repositories, we talked, uh, we, I think, and we talk about this data banks, yes? So uh, that was a full, uh, 80 at the very beginning, and nowadays it's uh, over 240. And we still open to have more, and we speak with like a, uh, I think 400 different repositories to have it implemented in the web of science. And this is happening, happening multidisciplinary. Um, of course, we do not index everything. We index these high-value uh, sources. And we do it this upon our selection criteria. So you can download the essay about the, this uh, criteria we do. It's similar like for the journals, books, or conference proceedings. So we need to have uh, make sure uh, be sure that uh, this material is uh, desirable for the research community and there is a stability of a repository which are not static, which are ongoing and we really matters about the quality of it. So when we, um, when we had a chance to speak with, um, with a repository we need to, and we accept this repository for inclusion, we need to make sure that it will fit the database and it will be easy to, uh, to maintain and retrieve. Uh, so we take the descriptive data from the repository and then we look at the metadata they have and you know that the, all the main, most of the depositories have a different way of presenting data. So we need to, like, say, let's say, unify all of those. We have our metadata also and we, uh, we have this, uh, in this, let's say, three uh, types of the documents, let's say record types. Yes, because the, in the Web of Science core collections or the other Web of Science environment, the record is a mainly article. Right, and here is another article. It's the it's the repository, which is the top level, and then within the repository we have a data studies, which are the let's say uh, less combined, um, but they, they they consisted with a data sets, and the data sets is the smallest part. So, for example, the servers, the tables with value will be the data set. You following me? Okay, I'm going to show you some examples. Don't worry. So, as I said before, it's multidisciplinary, so we care not only about the science and technology, we care about the social science, arts and humanities. 
although the majority is, of course, from the science and technology. But we have many of the data from the social sciences, uh, which I liked so much, for example, and like uh, economic statistics, public opinion surveys, that's the kind of the data we index. For arts and humanity, you can find uh, image collections, recordings, and so on. And very typical, like maps for the science and technology, algorithm, genomics, sky servers, and others. That's just only examples. Okay, so does it look familiar? Web of Science. So, what is a Web of Science? It's a universe. Uh, web of Science is a platform. It's a platform, on, on the platform right now we have a different databases. And you know that our um, current subscription in Poland is uh, regarding the Web of Science core collection, the main... Oh, I got this one. Does this work? Oh, you get a Web of Science core collections, right? And we get a Medline database and we get those, some of those regional <coughs> indexes. But we also, as a web of science, we, I mean, uh, me and my colleague Martin and probably other people in Thomson Reuters, we think about the whole environment ecosystem of the different databases. And one of the different databases is Data Citation Index, you have it here. Or, for example, Derwent Innovation Index, which is a patent database, and others. But I'm going to talk about the data today. So, you can search. Uh, the data repository. When you do the all databases search, and uh, <coughs> this will make all the databases work together for any uh, topic, as it's going to be child, child healthcare or climate change or whatever, you will find that there are different, if you filter by document types, you will find that you have many different uh, document types. Not only articles, not only conference proceedings, books, but we also have a patents, we have a data studies, data sets, and repositories. So that means, and you can find a percentage, because you can do the analyze and the search uh, further, refine it, like you can, like I show it here. So, um, so you can find, thanks to these options, uh, you can find how many of the data studies are goes along with a research or is it separate on, on what, to what topic what we can find and we can filter that not only by subject area or document size but we can also do it by institution country and so on i didn't say that we have this uh, we have this open access filter also so you can find what's open access okay and this is an um, uh, example of the metadata uh, as a funding, uh, funding information, so we provide the funding information when it's available. But what is the most important is the citations. So we have a citations here, and you can tell how this uh, data, it's data repository, but it might be data study, it might be data set, how it was cited. So how important, what kind of an impact it makes. And I just remind you that we have like 247, I guess, repositories, which gives millions of documents. And uh, if you will put it all together with the articles, that you may see how particular researcher is impactful in this um, academic or scholarly society. And, uh, right, um, so what, what else? Uh, we also, if it's a data repository like here, or the data set, uh, you can go farther, you can drill down to the, let's say, the more detailed level, and uh, you can go for additional uh, documents that comes uh, together with a repository. And what we do, we provide you an access to the source itself, so we get external links. And uh, you can get the information from the network. And for the most of the cases, it's open, it's free, so you can download it and you can use it. So we tell you what's valuable, and you can get it easily. Right, one more. Uh, so that's the metadata we use uh, in terms of the taxonomy notes. Uh, for, for those of you who are familiar with uh, our resources databases, you probably know that we use also that data. And, as I said, that's the problem, if you remember before, that the people don't know how to cite the data. So that's still the problem. So we can help, we want to help, and we show how it might be 
uh, what kind of um, uh, style you might use in the citation. We want to go from this traditional, let's say, uh, not uh, decided way of a citation to this modern way to, to have the credit for the, for the data. And it is connected with an EndNote, which is the reference managing tool. Uh, so you know you can easily import, export that to EndNote and you can use it in your paper when you want to cite the data, please do that. Share the data, show your, uh, uh, your, what? your tribute, appreciation for the, uh, for the researchers who did that. And this is just to conclude that this is whole environment for the citation connection that we have and we want to give you as much as possible and we want you to use it and it's available. Thank you. Uh, right, uh, hold on. Uh, hold on with your uploads. There's two of us and just for you we name ourselves Marchings. So it's easy if you have any questions or you want to ask anything, just ask for Marching. And of course, I'm sure, pretty sure that one of the margins will help you with that. So thank you for your attention and welcome to questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Martin. Uh, any questions yet? Or oh, oh, yes, I was thinking about you. I was keeping this long to avoid difficult questions, but here we go. Simple question. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Oh, just quick. Um, so, what kind of citations you are actually tracking down? Are these the ones that come from the bibliography list or the references list, or are you doing something more? Because in web of science, you do you can do actually some inference or some sort of mining of the PS. Because you know, most of the time, researchers are not educated to uh, cite properly. Right. Actually, there's not even an indication of what it means to cite properly a data set. But in general, they don't do it in the bibliography list. Or if they do it, it's a sort of mixture. Hmm. To my experience, at least when we mined for those bibliographies, it was hard to detect which was a data set or which was a publication. They both have a DOI, they follow very similar recommendations. So it's risky. Sometimes you end up concluding that it's a data, this data set, but in fact it's a publication that has been put, for example, in data site, right? So which are the techniques that you adopt or the policy that you adopt to detect mm -hmm. uh, data sets? Right. Um, so to answer your question, I can tell that uh, this problem is not only with such a, let's say, new way of um, showing the research article as a data, uh, data research data. We also have it with, uh, you know, uh, classic um, traditional articles. So it's very often that uh, the, someone cites the article in an improper way, or they just mistake the name, or do the, some mistake. And this, the machine actually, it's a machine doesn't do the uh, doesn't see the relationship. So we still have a place which is called Cited Reference Search so where you can find if the article was cited in, in, in the variance of the citations. So, and since the web of science is millions of records, it's over 60, I guess, millions of records, we want you, the society of the researchers and the authors, to help us to, uh, to chase, to track down these mistakes. So each record, um, I think, Okay, um, you need to trust me. Each record has the, the link which says suggest a correction. So if you, if you found that your repository, your data was not cited and it should be because someone did a mistake, you can let us know and we can connect that. But we're trying to do our best to, to capture all those citations as possible. But it's still new, it's like 2012 and we need to, all of us need to learn how to deal with that, how to cite these things and uh, what kind of a different styles you should use. I hope I answered the question. If not, we can discuss later. No? <laughs> There's a coffee waiting. So. Can I want to say, I mean, you showed us some sort of recommendation how to uh, cite, yes, here, how to cite a, a data set or, or database or repository, yes? But the problem is if you, if you ask other, if you ask publishers to a accept right. this, uh, I mean, recommendation, yes? And if they accept it, this can be done. Uh, you're right, and that's why we have the EndNote. And uh, if you um, if you will go for uh, Web of Science, uh, we have uh, on the Web of Science we have an EndNote, 
and uh, EndNode is a reference managing tool and in EndNode you have like, a, I'm not going to show that because I don't have the time but uh, I'm happy to do it later maybe, uh, you get like over uh, 3000 of the different styles that you may choose. What we do, we suggest that this one will be probably the most uh, appropriate one. So the same, I'm not going to show that but let's have a look on. Uh, so you still have the ability to, let's say, to if it's a data citation index uh, record, you can export that to EndNote. In EndNote, you can decide what kind of a style you want to use. And you know, we get the styles like a Vancouver, Harvard, APA, uh, and many, many more. So. It will change probably if you're going to send it to uh, to particular journal like a science nature they will tell you you need to use our citation uh, style and you are able to do it with an end note. Okay, one more question from Kevin. Really, it's a follow up from that point. I don't think the issue is about which style you use to cite data. I think the problem perhaps the question I was referring to is that too many journals still refuse to accept a data set as a reference in the list of citations. And it's because their interest is in maintaining citation being from journal article to journal article and nothing else. And that's a problem that we really need to overcome to make data a, a first class scholarly output. I believe so. I'm, I don't have too much experience with that, but uh, as I said, it's still new and uh you know, we really don't know. It's easy with an article, it's easy with a conference proceedings, but uh, with a data set, it's still some data sets don't have an author's names, so uh, so you you don't know how to do it, and it's still like we trying how to do it in the best way. And I hope that uh, if like like we get it together and we discuss about it, we 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 will work out on the common uh, style and standards that will help community.